Okay, guys, I'll give you instruction in the dressing room. They're having a clean match, okay? Good luck and God bless you. Nonito Donaire told me yesterday that he thinks he can still be that pound-for-pound -pound fighter who dominates the entire fight and not just a guy who relies on his big left hook to bail him out when he gets in trouble. That Yeka, for his part, says he's going to bring the fight to Donaire. Last time he saw a South African, the South Af African was about 5 foot 10 inches tall at 122 pounds. Matabula. <laughs> yes. And Jeffrey Matabula, whom Nonito Donaire defeated in 2012, is a fighter who comes from the same general area and the same gym scene which produced in Pee Wee Petyeka. If you are, in fact, a student of the sport, you may remember a South African star from about 15, 20 years ago named Buyani Bungu uniquely elastic kind of fighter who can get away from any punch at any angle. Bungu, for a brief period of time, was Vetyeka's trainer, but Vetyeka has now gone back to being trained by the people who initially fostered his particular career. Round one underway, and we'll see if Vetyeka, with his aggression, can pierce Donaire's defenses or perhaps set up a counter left hook for Donaire, which is an obvious weapon for him against an aggressive conventional fighter like Vetyeka. And one thing you like that uh, Vetyeka is doing already is he's giving a lot of thanks to Donaire with that jab. So Donaire doesn't know if it's going to be a jab or if it's going to be a hook. And he's keeping Donaire on the defense a little with those thanks right there. Their heads almost came together, and you saw them briefly touching gloves, acknowledging the brush with difficulty that could come from an accidental headbutt. There's a good left-hand shot to the body by Nonito Donaire. I bring this up every time we see a South African fighter, I feel, but there are boxing cultures, different cultures around the world. No, 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 no. And I'm sorry. the South African boxing culture is such that by the time you see a South African fighter on American television, that guy has fought his way out of gyms with good, tough fighters and has beaten legit fighters to get to where he is. So by the time he gets here, he's definitely the best of the best that they had to offer. Not always good enough to get them over the top on the highest level, but usually good enough to give the best fighters in the world a run for their money and sometimes a little more. And he's not making it easy for Donaire right here. Donaire has gone back to training with his father after several years of training primarily with Robert Garcia. Garcia, as you may have seen in the pre-fight picture of the corner, is still in the corner and wrapped Donaire's hands for the fight tonight. But Donaire says the instructions he'll take and the basic fight plan for the night has been constructed by his father, who was the early architect of his career, and Donaire says the architect of a style that incorporates both movement and punching power. Counter-punching, hard left hooks, as we've seen from him in recent years, but movement to set them up. More, he says, like Sugar Ray Leonard, than the fighter we've seen in the last couple of outings, who was much more of a one-punch, knockout hunting fighter. But they're being respectful of each other's power, even though Donaire's moving up. You can see that Yekka sees he can punch. And Donaire's not sleeping on that Yekka's power either. And Donaire goes to a knee at the end of the first round after apparently another brush of heads. And they're looking around Donito Donaire's eyes. And there it is. There's a cut immediately over the left eyelid. In fact, it's under the eyebrow, on the eyelid. You can scarcely find the worst place for a cut, Roy. Yeah, definitely the worst place you can have a cut because the blood will leak right into your eye, and this would definitely have your vision impaired. Let's take a look at the replay. Yeah, he see that Yucca fainting, fainting. Throws a jab. Oh, there, there's the head collision right there. When they came together with the combinations, their heads collided, and Donaire took the worst of it. Another angle. Right there. Fascinating how easily and quickly those brushes of the head can open cuts up. They flirted with it at the beginning of the round, and you saw them touch gloves and acknowledge the possibility that they were going to be coming into contact with each other, and then, boom, it delivers the cut over Donaire's left eye at the end of round one. Now, the rules under which they're fighting 
require that in case of an accidental foul, we go to the scorecards only after the fourth round. If the fight were to be stopped anytime during these first four rounds, it would be a no contest. Look at how flat foot Donaire, flat footed Donaire has been so far in this fight, Roy. It's not really flat footed. He's um, more settled down so he can throw more power. He said his dad might, makes him throw more punches, but more powerful punches. So he's actually just set so that when he counters, he can uh, do some damage. I, his, he doesn't look quite as nimble to me as he has in recent years. Well, I can show you a low blow right there by him. Low blow by? By Donaire. Yeah, he landed uh, right below the B12. That's the nickname for Simpiwe Vedeka. Right, right there, Max. You see yeah. him set the move back. Yeah. That, that lets me know that he's not flat-footed. He's ready to step back and defend. Not strictly flat-footed, but not on his toes as much as he used to be. Now, wait a minute. Vidyeko went to the canvas. Uh, unclear whether Pabon has ruled a knockdown here. There's no count, so apparently not. And he has taken Donaire to the doctor for an examination. We're scarcely into round two one minute into round two and already this is a discussion as to whether the fight has to be stopped because of the cut what happened here hmm. let's take a, a look at what happened and as we do we'll bring in our rules expert watching from new york steve weisfeld and steve already they're into an area where a difficult decision may have to be made fourth round it's a no decision so it's very crucial that the bout go to the end of the fourth round and the bell has to ring to end the fourth round for the bout to go to the scorecards I'm still confused as to what exactly it was that deposited bet on the canvas and why it was not ruled a knockdown hmm. I believe that was a push I think that was a push there. okay yes. Meantime, it looks to me like that Yeka just hit him with the right hand and hurt Donaire's eye, and somehow Donaire was allowed to break in the action as a result. <laughs> Blood beginning to flow from the cut above the left eye. You've already heard Roy Jones describe why it's the worst possible place to get a cut. Mike Bazell is listed as the cut man in Donaire's corner. So when Donaire returns the corner at the end of the round, it'll be up to Mike Bazell to, to do what he can to try to stop that bleeding. And that's a tough job that he has right there, Jim, because as you saw, it's the eyelid. When the eyelid is slit, it's really not much that you can do except for try to stop or control the bleeding. Mean meanwhile, it's a give and take in the ring. Neither fighter establishing anything in the way of command so far. And now Pabon once again talking to the fighters as again their heads come in contact with one another. And again, Pabon takes Donaire to the doctor. And what I don't understand is that this is a two right-handed fighters. This is not a southpaw versus northpaw. I was about to say that. I've never seen, and, and you could see where it's not intentional. Yeah. It's just the way they're coming together. And that's three or four headbutts already, and these guys are both conventional fighters. Highly unusual, or so it appears, from the distance from which we're calling the fight. Again, we're seated in Las Vegas. The fight is taking place in Macau. <laughs> And we're doing what we can to interpret what's going on there via video coverage. Coming up next on HBO, it's the premiere of 24-7 Cota Martinez as we go inside the lives and training camps of both fighters. Episode 2 airs Thursday night at 8.30 p.m., just two days ahead of their highly anticipated middleweight championship fight at Madison Square Garden in New York City next Saturday, June 7, live on HBO Pay-Per-View. Here you see Donnell coming forward through a right hand, and there the head but is. That was the first one, I think, in round one. Then they come back. And right there, they have a small collision again. I think that one was bad. I don't know. Maybe I, th I thought it hit them. That was a really bad one, right on that left eye again. Meantime, the Yak is doing good little work on the inside. Yeah, he's trying because while the, butts, while the butting is going on, he's still punching. And of course, the judges at ringside are still scoring on the expectation that the fight will go beyond the end of the fourth round and their scores could become material to a stoppage of the fight related to the cut at that point. Up to the end of the fourth round, as Steve Weisfeld underlined, it would be a no contest if the fight were stopped. After the end of fourth round, we go to the judges' scorecards. There's a good left hook for Donaire. Sneaks in another.